Good evening, church family. It's good to be with you. Uh, today I want to share a little bit uh, from the letter of 1 John. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, we as a young adult group have been going over 1 John this summer, and it's been really helpful and really good, uh, and a really good guide uh, for this cultural moment that we're in. Uh, and this past week I was on vacation at the beach, and I actually got to apply some of 1 John in, a, in an odd and <laughs> silly but, but beautiful way. Let me explain. Uh, let me give you a little backstory. So I grew up in Tennessee. Uh, I think I probably said that previously uh, in these devotionals, but I grew up a ferocious Tennessee fan and in a ferocious Tennessee fan family. I grew up going to every home game as a child because my parents worked them. So they sold t-shirts and hats and sweatshirts and all of that. Uh, and so I grew up going to some pretty incredible games. And I grew up to go in to see some really intense and awesome rivalries uh, in college football. And, and if you know anything about rivalries in college football, or SEC football in particular, which you don't have to, it's really not that big of a deal. But if you did, you know that Alabama football and Tennessee football, uh, we are uh, intense rivals. Uh, Tennessee so much has Alabama week. It's in October, and we're, we're just getting prepped for it, you know, and all the anxiety to, to do this. And... Um, so you're kind of bred and, and, and taught to be like, this is, this is the enemy or this is the, the rival. So fast forward to vacation. I'm at Orange Beach, Alabama, uh, in the heart of Alabama, of uh, football, uh, in many ways. And so I thought it was a really good idea. I'm just going to wear my Tennessee stuff to the beach and see what happens. Uh, and the, the second to last day, um, I mean, there was funny quips throughout the week, but the second last day, we're passing a, a group of folks, and they make a comment, and, you know, we stop for a second, and we laugh, and, and do a little jab, and about football, and rivalry, and all of that, and then it kind of, kind of came on all of us, that fact that, oh, we don't even know, like, what this is going to look like this year, like, we don't even know if there's going to be football, and there was this kind of weird, like, lament feel uh, to it. And, and it struck me, especially as I was leaving, it struck me that um, all the time that I had been trained to uh, think of Alabama fans as other, uh, and this is a silly example, but as those who are um, kind of, kind of the, the really small E enemy, uh, super small, uh, we're just humans. <laughs> we're just humans with different teams. Uh, we're image bearers. Uh, we are uh, just trying to figure it all out together. And it was in this, uh, I started thinking about how divided our culture is. Uh, you know, our culture is divided in the sense that it tells you that you can't believe in one thing uh, and hold to something else at the same time. You have to choose a side. Uh, there seems to be no place for complexity or nuance in love. Uh, and that's even diversity in our own communities. There's no room to be against this or for this at the same time or to be in the same community uh, with those opposing views. And, um, and I don't understand that. But the, but the issue really is that the kingdom of God and the call of the Christian is a call into an extremely beautiful, yes, but yet complex and broken place. The things that seek to separate us, whether they're trivial or rivalries of football teams or things that are really important in our lives, always come under and are submitted to the kingdom of God and the mission of the kingdom of God. It always, the kingdom of God always takes precedent over worldly things. And so 1 John 4 gives us an interesting kind of glimpse into this and it says, uh, 4, 18 through 21 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. For we love because he first loved us. And if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he uh, does not love his brother whom he is. If he cannot love his brother whom he's seen, cannot love God who he hasn't seen. For this is the commandment we have, that we are to love God, or whoever loves God must also love his brother. We love because we've first been loved. 
We don't fear our brother or our sister or our neighbor because we have first been loved. If we can't love those who are in front of us, how in the world are we going to love God? I mean, these questions are intense and they are hard to deal with. In uh, this time of, of pandemic and, and racial unrest and, and an incredibly divisive kind of election seasoning approaching, we must not forget the love of God. And what the love of God calls us to be in this world. This goes for those who are in the church and those who aren't. For Jesus said, they'll know that you're my disciples by the way you love one another. So what ways do people see in our lives the light and love of Jesus? They see in our work, our deed, they see it in, in, in how we love people, how we interact with people. Do the things we consume or write or say help us love our brothers and sisters in Christ? Or do they create even greater chasms between us? Are my fears uh, fears of people or of ideologies? And am I able to separate the two? See, just like Alabama fans aren't bad necessarily. Uh, the same principle applies to the rest of our lives. We have to be able to see those in front of us. We have to be able to love our brothers and sisters and be the light and love. So friends, let us love because we have been deeply loved and loved first. Let us not fear because we are loved. And perfect love casts out fear. For God is love. And he loves you. And he loves me. And I'm so grateful for that. Let's pray. Oh God, you have made us in your own image and you have redeemed us through your son. Or look on us with compassion and the whole human family. Take away our arrogance and our hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us and unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth the good of all the nations and the people of the peoples of this world may we serve you in harmony and around your heavenly throne through jesus our lord amen it's good to be with you friends blessings